Hi Stitching Sisters, it's Sylvia with Running With Needles and Scissors and I am filming this in the living room um, of the new house. It is after the stitching retreat, actually it ended this afternoon um, and I had the most fabulous time. I haven't really posted anything on Instagram, I've been kind of absent, I just wanted to be in the moment and enjoy uh, the time I had, um, let me take my glasses off because I see the reflection is this blue light reflection is what I'm getting in my glasses. Um, I'm a little tired, <laughs> not a lot of sleep, um, but a really fabulous time. Um, I'm going to keep this really, really short and uh, just talk a little bit about the retreat. And then I did an interview with Robert Harris. Um, those of you who are in some of the stitching groups on Facebook may know him. He is just an outstanding stitcher. And I'm gonna hang that on the end. Um, he brought, I asked him to bring some of his samplers, which he did, and there's some just amazing eye candy there. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, we all exchanged, or we all brought goodies for the retreat, which was so much fun. And let me show you just real quick um, what uh, some of the things I got. And uh, there was 14 of us. Um, it was just, so much fun to be around people who love to stitch to see everybody that I was going to retreat with 11 years ago and um, a couple new people were there but it was really just a fabulous time all right so let me just go through this one of um, the so this retreat is called oh dudes and dames dude Dames and Dude or Dude and Dames, because Robert is our dude. Sampler, well, I shouldn't even start that. I don't, I don't quite know what it's called anymore. Um, but we got awesome thick footy socks, house shoe slippers um, that Sarah knit. Uh, Rebecca, I'll just name them if I can remember made us mm -mm, homemade strawberry jam. This is probably gonna stay here um, just because of the little bit of the weight and what I'm all taking back, but we reckon we're back here in November. So I'm gonna tell Adam, hands off, this is ours. Isn't that, oh, isn't that fun? Uh, so this is a sponge <laughs> and it's cross stitch. Uh, it's machine done, but still spotless reputation. Very, very fun. So she brought that. Oh dear. I think this was Anne or Janice. But anyways, I she had different ones, uh, thread things, and I think back here is a corner gauge. So that was really nice. Always handy. Let's see. Marie made these little Things with Pat's favorite needle. I got a 28 because that's what I use most. So fun. So cute. Just this little needle book. Um, Kim. Oh, wait. hold on. Oh, gosh. Kim made little needle minders from Vintage Buttons. This is what I got. And my friend Ava got a special button with a Scotty on it because she has two black Scotties. Ava brought little pocket scissors and they're pretty sharp. The nice thing is, oh, the nice thing is the cap is attached. So no puncturing of your project. Deborah brought lanyard. So there's somebody that makes these and they're buttoned. So I picked a fairly neutral one. And so they're lanyards, that way I can attach my stitching glasses and also a scissor fob with a needle threader. How awesome is that? And Nancy made these wonderful little baskets and all kinds of fabrics. And just snap them apart, which I will do so I can transport this back to, back to Germany. So those were the fun things. Um, yeah, and I got to stitch quite a bit, but talk even more, um, which was 
you know, which the, the interactions are just what uh, makes it so much fun. Uh, I got there on Thursday. It was, uh, and we left this afternoon at about 2-ish, 2 2.30-ish. 2 no, 3. It was more like 3. Um, yeah, it started on Wednesday. People were already there on Wednesday, but I had quite a bit of things to do, and I just couldn't take um, that extra day. So, but next year, I will. All right, so with no more delays, I will attach Robert's video, and I hope you enjoy it. And then I'll film one. Oh, I might film one when I'm up there with uh, my friend Lisa in Virginia. She's a great stitcher as well, and uh, hopefully she'll be willing to do a small floss tube and show us some of her work. Take care and stay happy, healthy, and terrific. Bye. Hi, friends. Um, I'm here at our stitching retreat that I talked about a little bit. And I'm here with my good friend, Robert Harris. Uh, if you're on Facebook and some of the groups, you will know him. He is one of the most talented stitchers I know. And um, I asked him to bring some, some of his samplers. And he's gonna tell us a little bit more about him, about himself. Um, so I wanted to ask Robert, what got you going in stitching? Well, I really started after I joined the Navy back in 1979. I was kind of newly married and we got stationed up in Iceland and there was a young lady who uh, lived next door who had a, a new baby and so while my wife was working I'd go over and kind of uh, keep her company and and she was cross stitching and asked her what it was and about a couple of weeks later after that I went over and she just passed me a kit and at the time it was just a kit with Ada it came with its own little hoop and I think it was uh, a little sheep or bear with a big blue bow or something on it and so uh, that just kind of got me interested and so after I'd finished that I saw where over at the um, uh, uh, exchange on base they actually sewed Ada fabric they sewed DMC uh, they had like a leisure arts book so I picked that up and I ended up stitching everything that was in it wow. not necessarily because I liked it but it was just something that I could just keep my hands busy so it was more the process and not necessarily what it was at that point in time okay now you like I said I think you're one of uh, the most prolific stitchers amongst the most prolific stitchers that I know. And how do you find time and how do you structure your, your stitching time? Well, I guess that changed depending on where I kind of am in life. Uh, when my uh, kids were younger, uh, I was also going to college at the time. So I would use it more as a stress relief, like after classes and before bed, just something to relax my, my mind because it actually gave you some time to actually sit back and think about things. So it was more of that. Uh, it was totally different from what I was doing as a work-related or as studying. Mm -hmm. And so it was just something, something else. That, I used it more for relaxation or stress relief. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's how that, that changed. But you, you used to travel a whole bunch pre-COVID as well. And you, did you take your projects with you? I, t I tend to take something with me because uh, I'm not one to really go out after spending the day in the office. I do a lot of on site with clients. And so in the evenings after dinner, I just like to go back to my room. And so again, since it's more of like, this is what I do at home. So after I work and after I have dinner and before I go to bed at night, I can stitch. And again, it's just that relaxation. Uh, I'm still not one to really pull it out on an airplane. I was going to ask you that. You know, I was like, okay, so I know you work on big projects. I was like, so do you do it on the airplane? Because that's that's tight. You know? uh, yeah. Because I, I I I don't know being being a male stitcher and a very female dominated. I, I don't know if I would feel comfortable with the type of questions uh, that put, potentially be asked. I mean, I always have it in my backpack or my carry on to pull out but I can never talk myself into it. Oh yet. really? I mean okay. I'm, yeah. eventually maybe you know or if I saw something else go going on but yes right now it's mostly something to keep me occupied while I'm in the, uh, the hotel in the evenings. Now do you have uh, like TV on or you both you know your podcast how do you what do you do? Kind of both I mean I do like uh uh Watching TV is that background. Again, it's just kind of that background noise. Mm -hmm. So you're not really watching yeah. TV anymore. You know, you're just listening. Uh, but I do like also listening to podcasts, uh, kind of getting into those. I kind of tend to go between real life crime and and uh, just some educational uh, type of podcasts. And of course now with 
floss tube, at least that gives you something you can, again, turn on and, and mm -hmm. be able to see what other people are okay. doing. I find it very inspirational. Um, now, you have led a stitch, as you only led one stitch along for I've the actually, attic? Or? I've actually led two for the attic. Two. One was a needlework uh, press uh, piece that was kind of a companion to Ann Raynor. That was Sarah oh, okay. Hardman oh, yeah, Stewart. Yeah. You love that one. And then oh. la uh, for the year of COVID, uh, for 2020, I, I led the stitch along for Elizabeth Charlotte Cotton. Now, do you find that you have to be much more disciplined and structured? Like, I could never lead a stitch along because I'm not that disciplined at all, and I would always be behind and struggling. I know you don't have that problem, but did you find it a little bit constraining, or did you just, like, I'll knock this out, and then I'm going on to my other stuff? And Well, most of the time, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. <laughs> So uh, the first time that when I was asked, I was very nervous because uh, I'm not very good at keeping up with stitch alongs. I'm one of those that I want to do the project. And it's one of those where you see that, well, everybody else is doing it. So I'm seeing what everything's happening before mm -hmm. I get to that. And so I kind of lose interest. But at least being a sow leader, I knew I had to be disciplined. So it would be one of those where now I do need to dedicate the time and whatever how many a time that needs to be based off of how it is separated out over a year. Uh, so that did get me to be more disciplined. So at the very beginning of the month, I would actually focus on getting that month's assignment done. Mm -hmm. And usually I could get it done within about a week of good focus on nothing but that. And, and then be able to take my photos, submit it so people can see what we're doing and everything. And so that really kept me on track on what needed to be done month by month. But the sows I led were more of just do whatever you want. We're just going to work on this piece. So we never really laid it out, but I would get a, a suggestion based off if, if the pattern called for 12 pages. Let's focus on a, at least a page a month. Right, page a month. So you get, do you get to decide more so, let's say when, when Jean says, hey, I would like you to, to lead this cell, um, and you're like, and she's like, do it the way you want to, or does she give you guidelines? Do you, do you, do you look at it and say, I'll break it down to 12 pieces, you know, 12? Um... No, it was always just do whatever you want oh, okay. to. So she mm -hmm. kind of left that up to me and what I felt comfortable with. So uh, it wasn't something that was dictated to, I mean, some Again, all, we all stitch differently. So some people want to know what we need to do this month mm -hmm, versus mm -hmm. those that always, you know, we're, they want to finish. They're just going to kick it off with us and they're going to finish yeah, it in four months. Right through it. Yeah. Because they're more of a monogamous stitcher, whereas others are doing other projects. So. Right. You've also model stitched some. I have. Uh, one of my first is uh, a good friend, who uh, uh, Gloria, who runs Milady's Needle Design. She was a, a local uh, artist mm -hmm. here, our design in, in, in our neighborhood. And so I met her through a local needle workshop, and she asked me if I could model stitch something for her. And of course I said yes, because well, I felt very honored, because I didn't even think my stitching was good enough to do any type <laughs> of model. Your stitching is pristine, but okay. Um, well, you know, we're more critical <laughs> of our right, own right. stuff than versus, but... Yes, I did that, and then uh, and I really liked it. I mean, it was very enjoyable, uh, even though maybe the taste wasn't what I would right, normally right. do mm -hmm. because I started really getting into more of the rep reproduction side of the house once I got out of the Navy mm -hmm. uh, versus uh, self or own design type items. And so Gloria was one of the first uh, d uh, designers who, who I model stitched for. And just more recently, in the last couple of years, I've started mod being a model for Hands Across the Sea mm -hmm. with Nicola Parkman and Sandra uh, down in Australia. Right. Would you do more model stitching if you could? Or are you like, this is just about the right amount of time, uh, and I really like stitching, also deciding what I want to stitch on? I think it's a combination of both, really, because I, again, I'm more of a process stitcher, so it's not necessarily the design. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it, it helps if the design appeals to me. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, it starts getting because, like anybody else, I've started collecting patterns that I really want to, to work mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And so um, part of that, though, is, is really in working with Nicholas, it's not one of those where you have to have it done. You know, I need it in four months, so it's not this large sampler that you got to completely like focus on for right. that period of right. time. So you can work on other things, you know, that you want to do. So it gives me a thing to go back and forth. And so that's, I, I do like that freedom because if you do kind of get bored 
with something, then you're not going to enjoy it if you're just trying to, you know, pump it out type thing versus I know I still have time to do that so I can focus on something else I like to do. Right. How many hours a day do you think on average do you stitch? Well, weekends, of course, you can always get in more stitching right. than you can during the week. But I would say it's probably I average maybe two, two and a half hours in the evenings in, in my stitching. I do too, but <laughs> I don't accomplish anything like you do. So maybe it's not focused the two, two and a half Yeah, because I can be yeah. fairly focused. So yeah. we're empty nesters now, right. so there's none of that distraction Us around too, the house. Us too, but <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I can't, well, I don't, okay. All right. Um, so anything else we want to know about you before we look at some of your fabulous work? Uh, no, not no. unless anybody had any questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll pass them on to you whenever they, they comment on. Well, I asked Robert to bring some of his samplers in to show us. And so let's get cracking and look at some real fantastic eye candy. Okay. Uh, the first one, I, I'll just, I've just got these thrown in a box. So yep. nothing's going to be in any order. Uh, but we talked about the sow that I led last year at the attic. And that was the Elizabeth Charlotte Cotton. And I have the model that I stitched here. Uh, I did finish it. The Come closer to finish the it all last so you guys year. can see how beautiful this is. Yep. I worked this go. on a 46 count uh, uh, gray linen uh, with a, uh, a Vera swab oh, that right. was provided. So uh, this is what we did last year for the attics. Uh, stitch and this along. is a needlework. No, this was. This is a hands across hands the sea. Hands across the sea. And this is available, right? Or. Uh, this is available. Okay. Uh, I think now it's been released to the general public, mm -hmm. so you can find it at your favorite needlework Needle store. store. Uh, word of note is that the center section, the center section, it's a lot of satin stitches. This is all done over three linen threads, wow. uh, whereas the rest of it's done over two. two. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to gently lay it behind us so we can continue on. <sighs> Oh, this one's big. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite designers is uh, Amy Mitten, uh, Fibers to Die For out of Canada. Oh, this, this is the one I want to stitch. Yeah, this uh, is this was, uh, one of her uh, teaching pieces that she currently has. It's called Threads of Connection. It's a Scottish sampler. I'll go closer. Sampler. I'll bring it closer to the camera so people can see how fabulous it is. Just a few specialty stitches. Uh, a lot, so mostly fun. just all cross stitch, full cross stitch. Uh, in her, with her fibers. With her fibers, mm -hmm. yeah. She's got fantastic silks. Now, the, it's this reason, this this is why I want to <laughs> stitch this because, you know, it is so unique, but overall, it's just a beautiful, beautiful sample. I had no idea it was this big. Yeah, then this, is, this is, is so pretty. yeah, this is one of my favorite parts. And we got too. a Tudor Rose in here, right? Yep, Tudor Rose and For the Thistle. Our Tudor Rose Sampler Guild, probably not, but it's in there. Yeah. We can just climb it. All right. Fantastic. Did you, did you mention, did you change out the linen? Uh, yes, I did change out the linen. I okay. think the linen that came with the kit was like a 40 count uh, lamb's wool. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really kind of thick. So I had this in my stash, so I used this. This is a, also a 40 This is count? a 40 count. Can so I just she, flip it to the back? Okay. <laughs> because, you I know. I think we were probably seeing the back, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were, see? <laughs> Here's the front. <laughs> I didn't know we were looking yeah. at the back. You guys probably were from the from the uh, uh, from the lettering. Yeah. So here's the front. The back was fabulous. The front's even better. Yes. Here we go. It took me a lot of learning, uh, of course, of doing this to get my backs good. Before, I never carried a pair of scissors, so it would be just snapping off the thread. Oh, so snapping. I would have all kinds of linen threads all and over the was, back. Oh, so, so, so beautiful. And she's such a talented. Yeah, she's one of my favorite designers yeah. for original designs. I hope you enjoyed looking at the back for a really long time. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't notice. <laughs> Um, another designer that I like who does a lot of reproductions is Scarlet Letter. And this you know, look, is just it is the uh, front. It is the front. <laughs> this is the front on this one, where that went. There we go. It's a, we'll start on the top. So a lot of. Yeah, that's the bottom. Oh, this is, oh yeah, start at, and then let's go down. And, wow. This is amazing. There we go. Ooh, that just keeps going. Goodness. 
And this is one of the projects I would take on my travels. Uh, this was a traveling project, so whenever I would travel, this is uh, one that I, I had been working on for about three years. Uh, but then once uh, COVID hit, I was down to about this area, and I just wanted to get like, it finished. Let's get it done. So mm -hmm. I just went ahead and completed the, the bands on the bottom. Did you use uh, some of this on the... Um the round robin you guys did, all did here. I did the one that we had a round robin. The band uh, that I select that I put on uh, Rebecca's Rebecca, right. sampler was this one right here. Oh yeah, this that one was one in the blue and brown. Yeah, and on hers, I did it with two different colors of blue. It'll come closer. So they did a really fun round robin, um, and had they took two years to finish it because of COVID, but uh, they were supposed to stitch. What was the we were supposed to have six weeks to each stitch our band. There were seven mm -hmm. participants, and now it went over a year. We guys have a lot of extra time. That was yeah. beautiful. Uh, another one that I completed last year was Elizabeth Eaton from Scarlet Letter. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, for this one, I just really liked the bright colors. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really drawn to the the square that had the red background. That's very unique on a sampler. Uh, it's got some specially stitches, got a some lot of a lot of right eyelets, here, right, right. yeah, uh -huh, full of eyelets, and it also has a, a bunch of queen stitches. Uh, populate oh, this whole closer. Then. Let's see if we can see. I can't. Yep, there you can see them. The queen stitches. Wow, fantastic. And is it mostly forty count that you like to stitch on? Is that what you prefer, <laughs> 40, 46 count? Uh, yeah, my new my new favorite is about forty six count. Oh, no. Uh, but again, uh, like for the queen stitches on this on 46 count, was, was ended up being very tight. Mm -hmm. So it, these also become learning lessons. <laughs> right. You got to look at your stitching, what it's going to, what's in that. That's what I learned is like I get to stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's not going to work. Or it's going to not look great on this fabric. Yeah. You know, I should have looked at that. So I try to look at what's in the sampler before I pick my fabric, but I'm not always successful because I'm like, I'm gonna do that in 56 count, this would be great. And then I'm like, there's so much over one. <laughs> what was I thinking? I kind of try to look ahead on it, yeah, but you know, yeah. this one I knew that was queen stitch, but once I got down there, it's like, I'm not gonna start it over on something different. You know, I tend to just keep on going. Right, right. So, okay, next one. Yeah, another scarlet letter. Uh, I'm really kind of drawn to, to the... Uh, like the... Like the uh, uh, Scandinavian Friesland style. And this has a lot of those different yeah. types of alphabets, uh, just different types mm. of motifs Beautiful. and band. And you've been in those countries. You spent spent some time working there, right? Yeah, correct, a lot of Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. So there's also some personal experiences, I guess. Yeah, beautiful. Everything stitched in silk that we've seen so far? So far? Oh, uh, no, with the exception of the last one. Elizabeth Eaton, I just, I did at that in DMC. Oh, just, you wouldn't know. You, I mean, nothing wrong with DMC. It's, I mean, yeah. it's really, really beautiful. I do Ooh. find myself doing a lot of things. If there is something I really like and I do know that I'm going to have to order what? and I really want get to get to the, the sampler, I'll just go through my DMC stash and pull stuff out. Mm -hmm. what fa is this a Zweigart fabric? It's, uh, it's, yes, it yeah, is. I think it's, it's that kind of something heavy. willow. Willow. Oh, river willow? With, uh, no, that's, I, I think no, it's No, I, I forgot. Um, it's a different type of willow, but I just, again, had that piece. Right. I cut it off as something else, so I just thought that colors looked really nice on that. So at, uh, back in the day when I still lived here and, and would go to guild meetings, you know, we have the show and tell, and Robert would just bring out a bed sheet of linen, you know, and hold it up, and it's like, I started, I finished this one on here, and down here I started this one, and over here in the corner I'm going to do this one. You know, but he had it all on one <laughs> Big, big piece of fabric. I guess I'm sort of like uh, on Brendan the cereal starter. Like Laura is afraid to cut the linen because she didn't know, you know, how much you actually needed, and you cut it too short. So I was, I was kind of that way for a while. But I've gotten better at least Got cutting, better. cutting something. I mean, this is now. really it's like a, you know, yard of fabric, and he's like, this yeah. one's coming up from the bottom. This one's over here. It's like, oh my gosh. But I tend to do I, that though. Current project I have in there is on one side I'm doing one thing and I'm fixing to start That's something on the other side. So yeah. without cutting them, see if I've got that. All right. All right. That looks like a lakeside linen, but this is an ex Jew. Oh, ex oh I love linen. her. And linen. this is a forty six <gasps> count linen. Uh, again, this is uh from uh Grace Kimish down at the very bottom mm -hmm. down here. 
I've never uh, seen this one. What is this? Is this? a scarlet letter. Scarlet letter. Okay. And uh, I was really though. drawn to this. Uh, like I said, I was in the Navy, so I, I do like things that do have like the, the, boat. the boats mm -hmm. on them. Fun. And so uh, fun. this was one that I had on. I've been working on for a couple of years, and I wanted to get it done last year. And I did put my final stitches on on her date, December uh, the 20th. 20th. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, this is beautiful. I love the deer. That that face on the deer is priceless. He's like, what am I doing on this little little hill? <laughs> why, why am I late? What's going on? But yeah. a very nice, beautiful. colorful, again, very bright colors. Kind of drawn to those two instead of more muted. Yeah, I like I like bright. But then there's some that are really bright. Yeah, yeah. a lot okay. of fun, a lot of fun. Beautiful And um, I guess these, uh, well, I didn't know they were this was the hands across mm -hmm. the sea. A lot of people had started stitching this one. This is my Eliza Bell Cox. Gorgeous. And this is stitched just in uh, DMC, some overdyed DMC uh, conversion provided by Victorian Motto. Oh, so oh, so this is in Victorian Motto. Uh, uh, her kit that oh, came wow. with the threads and, right. the, and the linen. I wasn't even paying attention. That's beautiful. I love, I love her, um, love her threads. I really do. I think they're very, very nice. It's just it's the first problem. time I'd ever stitched with them. You know, it's so. a problem getting them. So, that could work. All right. Uh, and one from a lady's needle. Uh, this was uh, her piece from a oh, lady's nice. needle. Nice. That's beautiful. I think this is. <gasps> And emptage, em emptage, something down here. Let's see. Yeah, see. And emptage. Yep, I'm a lady's needle. And this was the first one I uh, sampler I've ever stitched on 46 count. This was what got me started on my 46 count linen uh, journey. Journey, yeah, I love 46 count. It's really just as easy as 40 count, to be honest. It really uh, is. It really is. Yeah, yeah. And like in anything, once you get a couple of stitches in, your, and eyes, your adjust eyes adjust to right, to the right. threads. Beautiful and this was all work. done with MPI. So Ann Emptage probably can still get that, right? You can get this, yep. Yep. Very nice. Beautiful. Everybody's saying, no, 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 no. Why don't we still hold that up? Yeah, what do you... <laughs> Come on, we'll show uh, it all. For the stitch along yep. last year, too, that we had for Ann Roberts. Yeah. Uh, so I completed that one. So I have Nicole's start, Nicole from Nicole Needlework. Mm -hmm. She sold it and I was like, yeah, I'm getting it. And oh, so when okay. it came, I was, before I opened it, I was like, I was telling my husband, I said, Nicole always does the border first. So I'm hoping she actually did the border <laughs> on this one, just the outline. And she did. I was like, woohoo, yeah, because, yeah. you know, meeting up that border is always a challenge for me. So it's all done. And, I and just like with it. any of these, it doesn't look like that big, but this has a lot of stitching it's in it. Dense. I was yeah, really, right really surprised. This. Yeah, that's a lot. So, and I that's used uh, out on, the, of course, one of the Facebook groups, uh, a lady posted an NPI conversion, and that's what I used. That's what on you this used? One. Beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, <laughs> there for a while, too, I was on the Uneven Wee 5260 uh, linen count. This is the GG, right? And this is a GGR. Oh my gosh, we're going to go a little closer. Yep. Look how tiny this is, but it's really a big sample. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. That so, this is was gorgeous. all done by a conversion uh, created by the uh, attic. Attic needle uh, or to Tudor silks? All Tudor silks. Mm -hmm. And this is Anne Mar. Mo okay, what is it? Motion? Motion? Something like that. Yeah. Motion. Uh, so Solomon's Temple. Yep, Solomon's I Temple. I mean, just beautiful. Beautiful. And, and wow. this one I, I do have, I did personalize, so I actually think I have the uh, date. I finished this one in 2016, and I have mm -hmm. my RLH, uh, so mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. did personalize this that one. That is a fantastic sampler. Fantastic. But you were saying that the 56 is a lot easier to work the with. The 56 than the I uneven. found out than the uneven. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. a, the, the linen threads to me seem not to be as thick as they are on the 5260, so the hose open up a, a lot easier. better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, another mm -hmm. hands across the sea, Ann Matthews. Oh, yeah. Fun. Of uh, course, it looks like what do you stitch is on burlap compared to when you, you know, when you just. <laughs> 
<laughs> had that out. I'm like, your stitches are huge. Again, this is yeah. 46 count fabric, and I mean, <laughs> I was really drawn to the the, uh, the, the chapel or the, the church yeah, that's yeah, down yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. I thought the colors in that were a lot of fun. That is fun. That green is unusual yeah. in a sampler. Very, very fun. Beautiful work. All right. The goodies just keep coming. Uh, another one was uh, Mexican samplers. I really do like doing the Mexican samplers. Mm -hmm. I have quite a few of those hanging on the wall at home. Uh, this was done by Needlework Press. I don't even, I think this one's just called a Mexican band sampler. There's no other name for it because there like was no that. really dates or anything. I like the little hookah, it. whatever that is in the, in the corner. It's so different from all the rest of it. She's like, I'm just gonna put this little urn or whatever that is right there. <laughs> But yeah. the thing that really was drawn on this was these diamonds. I really did like these diamonds. The oh, yeah, diamond they're unusual. Yeah, uh, yeah. The colors, too, are really, really nice yeah, on this always, one. Yeah, they're always, always. I, I love the one from Linda Daniels and Luz Gonzalez. Or Gon... Yeah, Luz Gonzalez. Yeah. Yeah. It's a gorgeous one. Um, this is one uh, after I did Ann Emptage. This was my second all on 46 count uh, linen. Uh, this is from the Sampler and Ann and. Sampler Needle. and Antique Needlework magazine. And this one would be production by, ne needle by Needlework Press, right? Press. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. is so EF1869, right. something like that. So the best way to get this, well, I wonder if they have it released or not. I think you can get okay. it through Needlework Press okay. now. But you can also get that CD, the CD on the from Sampler, Sampler and, Antique, and then Needle everything's Work. on there, which I think is, is really great. And that's what I had. That's the first time I'd ever seen this, is scrolling through there. Mm -hmm. And now I know of a lot of other people who have started and finished this one. Yeah, but this, this is, is beautiful. This was, again, very, very fun. Then again, it's a lot more stitching than you would think. Well, this is intense right here, a, yeah, you know, and there's the, a lot of changes in there. And this one has, the wreath has a lot of changes. But there's there. a lot even in these bands of yeah, the different yep. colors, but yeah. a, lot, a lot of fun. Oh, it's beautiful. So in the Biedermeyer direction, probably. Huh? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Oof. And uh, last, last one I have was the uh, BG oh, uh, BG eighteen seventy four sampler. Oh, this is fantastic! Oh my gosh, check this out. That's from Samplers Not Forgotten. Right? Samplers Not Forgotten, mm -hmm, correct. Mm -hmm. I have like. It up. And this is on a 46 hand dyed linen from uh, Shakespeare Peddler or Kitten Stitcher. Mm -hmm. It's one of hers. I guess I think the color of this at the time was grunge. Uh, and Perfect. this is all done with NPI. Ah, I kitted mine up with, take a guess. Uh, uh, HDF, hand dyed yes. fibers. <laughs> Vicky Clayton. Yes, I did. I did indeed have it kitted up with HDF. Beautiful. I love that. that um, I'm not a purple fan, but I do love, I know it's more violet here, the little basket with the flowers. And, and this one I, I appealed to me because it's it's a long sampler, mm -hmm. more horizontal Sideways, yeah. verses. Mm -hmm. And then it also looked like completely two different samplers. You had the whole yes. alphabet part, and then you had all the other motifs on the side. Right. But I have a place in the house, once I get this framed, this will go perfectly. Something Wonderful. long and narrow that I needed. Thank you. Yeah. Well. It's almost half hour, so we're right within our budget All of right. a lot of time. Robert, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for bringing your beautiful work and just being willing to get on camera. Not everybody's comfortable doing that, so I really appreciate it. Do it for friends. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye. -bye. Bye.